this just wasn't going to be scalable um, to just keep going to the bank with mortgage asking for mortgages. Um, you know, at that point, we had five. We had five mortgages. Now, all of our properties were cash flowing, but we had five mortgages. Um, and I, the amount of administration that goes through it. And it's like I, I can show you the income statements and uh, the financial statements from all these other properties. That's not enough. They want to see bank statements. They want to see all this other paperwork. Um, and it just, I, I realized it wasn't going to be scalable. Um, so Caroline and I, we made the decision um, really coming out of, of the live event we attended in February that we wanted to do this full time. We want to migrate to doing uh, real estate investing and helping other people, most importantly, which we can do in so many different ways uh, under the private money model. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. If you have never raised private money and you're looking to raise private money to fund your real estate deals, you're going to absolutely love this episode. You see, my guest on today's episode of Raising Private Money just started raising private money a couple of months ago. He's already raised $200,000 and he's already closed on his first private money deal all funded with private money, and the rehab has just started. We're going to unpack that story. You're going to hear exactly how he's doing it. But first, I want you to know my guest is a family man who strives to serve others by first serving his family. In addition to that, he served in the U.S. Navy from 2001 to 2007, aboard the USS Guardian for three and a half years. And after that, it was followed by a tour on the USS Kearsarge to complete his time in service. My guest and his wife began their first investment property purchase back in 2019, and that was focusing uh, on rentals. And I tell you, in their business, they seek to serve others in all aspects. And one example of that is giving back to veterans along the way. In fact, a percentage of the proceeds from every real estate transaction they do is given back to veterans organizations. You're going to meet my special guest, Christopher Cornett. We're going to hear about how his wife, Caroline, is very involved in the business as well. And you're going to hear how he is raising private money and doing deals right after this. Well, hello, Chris, and welcome to the show, man. Hello, Jay Connor. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me on. Absolutely, Chris. Well, it's such a pleasure to have you on. I mean, you are rocking the house with your real estate investing business. Um, you just started raising private money a couple of months ago. I already got private money raised. We're going to hear the story here in just a few minutes about how you have got your first private money deal closed and funded with private money. You got the rehab started. But uh, you didn't start out working with private money to fund your deals. You started, uh, you and your wife, Caroline, started back in 2019, but you weren't using private money. So tell us, what did your real estate business, your real estate investing business look like before you started using private money to fund your deals? So, Jay, our, our real estate business was funded by banks. Um, we would uh, put 20% down, go to the bank, get a mortgage, uh, get on our hands and knees, as you like to say, and, and um, you know, go through quite a, a lot of administrative paperwork trying to get a mortgage. And um, then we would uh, you know, turn the, those into long-term rentals. So our first few deals we did were, were long-term rentals. And we realized that it was going to take a lot of those and, and a lot of capital to be able to truly scale our business. Well, Chris, you and I can relate a lot. Uh, one big thing we can relate on is, in my case, the very first six years that my wife, Carol Joy, and I were in this business from 2003 until 2009, the only funding that we had available, the only thing I knew about 
was just going to the local bank, asking for a mortgage, you know, praying, <laughs> applying, and hoping for an approval. And of course, as you now know, in this world of private money that you and I do, there's no application process. Your credit score has got nothing to do with how much money that you're going to be able to raise. We never ask. We never beg. We never sell. We never persuade. We never chase. We actually have the private money and the private lenders chasing us. So let's make sure everybody's understanding, Chris, what you and I are talking about. Tell everybody, the audience, what do we mean by private money? Who exactly or what is a private money lender? So private lenders, Jay, are private individuals that are lending capital from their investment, available investment capital, or possibly a self-directed IRA or alternate source um, to, to fund real estate, uh, collateralized by real estate. Um, so it's not a mortgage company. It's not a brokerage firm. It is um, capital backed by individuals. In other words, we're doing business with human beings. That's correct. <laughs> we're doing business with people. And not, and not institutions. So, you know, as you said, you, start, you and your wife, uh, y'all started in 2019. Something happened. There's, there's normally like a pivotal point. There's an aha moment. There's a light bulb realization. There's something that happens that causes someone such as yourself, someone like myself, to say, you know what? I need to find a better way to fund my deals. Now, of course, what happened to me, as you know, Chris, I was getting my deals funded at the bank the first six years, and then I lost my line of credit. I mean, I was shut down, not because of my credit score. I had a great history with the bank, but my I lost my line of credit in January of 2009. And had a couple of deals under contract and didn't have any way to fund those because I learned on the phone that I lost my line of credit. Well, that was my aha moment. I said, I didn't know anything about private money yet, but when I lost my line of credit, it's called pain. Normally there's a trigger. Uh, something happens that causes pain. At least it was in my case that says, you know what? I need to find a better way, a quicker way to get my real estate deals funded. And so that's what caused me to go on this path immediately of finding alternative ways to fund my deals. And you know, Chris, it was the biggest blessing in disguise as far as what happened to me and Carol Joy. Uh, I mean, if I hadn't lost a lot of credit, I wouldn't have been forced into the necessity of finding another way to fund my deals because I was, I was going to lose over $100,000 in profit on those two deals that I had on the contract. So that's what happened to me. That was like what like woke me up to look for another way. Tell us your story. I mean, you're going along 2019 for a few years. You're working with the bank. Um, God forbid you're putting 20% down. I mean, as you now know, in our world, we don't put any money down. In fact, we bring home a big check. Right. When we buy it. We, don't you love? Who wants to get paid for our houses? Don't you <laughs> love bringing home a big check when you buy and taking none of your own money? What was your aha moment? What happened? So, Jay, uh, we, my wife, and Caroline, and I started investing in 2019. We uh, purchased one property a year, 2019, 2020, 2021. And then in 2022, we purchased two properties at the end of the year, actually around the same time. Uh, and it was October of 2022 last year. October and November, we closed on two different deals within less than 30 days. Um, during that process, it was I felt like it was a full time job to deal with two different banks, trying to get two different mortgages. And, and also, I was beginning to realize that this just wasn't going to be scalable um, to just keep going to the bank with mortgage asking for mortgages. Um, you know, at that point, we had five. We had five mortgages. Now, all of our properties were cash flowing, but we had five mortgages. Um, and I, the amount of administration that goes through it. And it's like, I, I can show you the income statements and uh, the financial statements from all these other properties. That's not enough. They want to see bank statements. They want to see all this other paperwork. Um, and it just, I, I realized it wasn't going to be scalable. Um, so Caroline and I, we made the decision um, really coming out of, of the live event we attended in February that we wanted to do this full time. We want to migrate to doing uh, real estate investing and helping other people, most importantly, which we can do in so many different ways uh, under the private money model. 
Um, and so with that, we, um, we decided to uh, uh, put our jumped off a leap of faith into the program and we've already closed on a private money deal and, and, you know, less than 60 days in the program and our, um, actually have that property going under, under contract today. But our aha moment was trying to do two mortgages at once and it being a whole nother secondary job just to deal with the banks and the, um, and the lenders, uh, for all the things they needed. And by the way, when you have a mortgage, there's so many other criteria that you have to, uh, to follow through with and, um, stipulations and they go along with that. So, so on those first five houses, uh, were you having to put 20% down out of your own money, your own cash flow on those houses? Yeah, uh, that's correct. 20% down. There was one that we were able to do 15% down, but in general, 20% down is the rule of thumb. Right. So, so when you were, when you were borrowing money from the banks prior to this world of private money, what was happening to your cash flow and your savings? Well, I mean, it was constantly just, you know, replenishing the savings to be able to make that 20% down payment. Um, plus the volatility of interest rates, right? I mean, you, you, you're locking in an interest rate, but then, uh, you know, as interest rates are going up, it's impacting your, um, your cash flow when you're working through the banks and how they, um, how they structure the loans. Um, right. So, um, and yeah, 2020, 2021, yes, we, we were able to get high threes, low fours, even for investment properties, but that's not the case anymore. Um, oh and boy, that, that's changed, hasn't it? It sure has. Plus, we're giving it back to corporate entities, right? When you're in, uh, when you're um, taking a mortgage, the 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 proceeds, the interest is going back to corporate entities. I'd rather give it back to an individual who could use it. I'd rather help people that maybe I know, um, or, or usually I know, and and help provide them an opportunity that's going to be pretty hard for them to find um, in as secure a way as we can offer this. You said something a moment ago, Chris, really, really interesting. You said it's a full time job now when you got five. It's a full time job just on the administrative end of getting the banks or the mortgage companies the information that they want. And so, like, from the time you went on the contract before this world of private money, how long was it taking you to close on a deal? 30 days, 45 30, days? 30, uh, 30 on the low end. 45 days even sometimes depending yeah. on how how much they wanted to examine things and look at things um you know they're they're hedging their their risk they're they're trying to make sure that you know you're going to be a, a you know especially that was changing in, in the fourth quarter of 2022 um things were starting to tighten up a little bit when it came to lending and uh, interest rates were going up and the economy was experiencing a slight bit of shift um so it was you know um it was an interesting time to have two deals with banks at the same time. And that was when I was pulling my hair out going, this is, this is, there's got to be a better way. There has to be a better way. <laughs> and there is a better way. There is a better way. <laughs> that was when, yes, that was when I was like, there, let me, and you know, I joined your private money Academy actually, uh, um, in it right after that, it was right around Thanksgiving. Cause it was a black Friday deal. That's right. You were running a black Friday special for your, uh, private money program. And, um, I absolutely saw the value in it and jumped in and went with both feet and have been learning ever since. And um, especially since the live event, things have really taken off. I am just so excited for you now. So you were taking, having to put 20% down, 15% down on those first deals prior to starting to use private money. So um, how much money did you have to put down out of your own pocket on this first private money deal? None. And Damn. I got a check back. <laughs> how, did, how did that yeah. make you feel not having to pull any money out of your own yeah. pocket to buy this particular deal? Oh, it felt great. It felt <laughs> like uh, I could do this. If we can do multiple of these um, without that, the stress was much lower. The transaction was quick um, it, it, on all fronts. I, I was like, wow, that that's really a breeze. Hey, now let's talk about quick. Now you were saying it was taking you. 30 to 45 days to close the deal when you were using the bank's money. Now using private money to close from the time you went under contract, how long did it take you to close the deal? So we went under contract April 3rd and closed April 18th. Now so let, we me, under let, me do, let me do a little fast math here. <laughs> April 3rd. Did you say April 15th? 18th, yep. So if my math is correct, you closed in 
um, what, 12 days, uh, 15 days. You closed Yeah, and less than that if you take out the weekends. And honestly, Jay, we could have closed quicker. There was something on the seller side that delayed a couple of things with the title that had to get cleared up that wasn't on our side. We could right. have closed even faster. Right. I, we, I'm yeah. confident we could have closed the week after we put, um, we made the offer and went under contract. It's so amazing. Seven to 10 all, days. I do it all the time. Look, yeah. I mean, if this happens all the time uh, for us that know about private money. And that is, I just went under, I just went under contract this past Friday. This past Friday on a house here off Highway 24 in Newport, uh, the after repaired value is about $230,000. Purchase price is $100,000. The rehab is going to be about thirty, dollars right? So I've got $100 purchase, $130, including the rehab. And then the after, so it's going to be about $100,000 spread profit, less realtor fees and carrying costs. So I went under contract this past Friday. We're going to close next week, less than two weeks, less than two weeks. And, and that's the same thing with us. I could actually, in fact, uh, we sent the offer to purchase to my real estate attorney yesterday. We got the title search back today. Everything's all clear. And you know what? My real estate attorney uh, emailed me and asked me earlier before getting on the show here with you, Chris. She says, you want to close Friday? <laughs> like three days from now, three days from yeah. now. And I said, well, we would, but the seller's got a, got a little cleaning up to do before we can actually close. But we're still we're going to close it. So, so let's stop and think about this for a moment in this world of private money. You didn't take, uh, so, so we're closing in two weeks or less, all right? Um, and now let's talk about the paperwork involved compared to the paperwork when you were doing those deals with the banks. So paperwork, um, what paperwork did you have, did you have to get ready for this closing, Chris, compared to the bank? The attorney took care of it all. I didn't have to prepare really any paperwork. I just had to communicate between my private lender and the attorney and make sure all parties are on the same page. And, um, really from my perspective, it was pretty simple, yeah. pretty simple. So it's like, so when I go to a closing using private money, uh, the documents that, that are that we're using, there's a promissory note, right, which is a page and a half long. Who's the private lender? We're the borrower, our entity. What's the principal loan amount? What's the interest rate? What's the frequency of payments? And if we have payments, we might be accruing the interest. So it's a page and a half long on a promissory note. Of course, we're not borrowing any unsecured money. Uh, we're, right. we're giving them a deed of trust for a mortgage to collateralize their note. Um the insurance policy, which isn't even involved with the closing, we name our private lenders the mortgagee, so they're protected on the insurance policy. And, you know, so Chris, let me ask you this. You go to the closing. I assume you went to the closing. You might not have even gone to the closing. Did you go to the closing uh, to sign some documents? I, I had a phenomenal experience. I've never had a better closing experience. I did not even have to go to the closing physically. We did the closing virtually, um, legally. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, she was able to do video and she had her process for having to record what I said, but it was completely, you know, the notary um, and the title company and the attorney. We were all able to do this virtually. So I actually never even left Clemens and I closed on a, a house in Danville, Virginia. Um, and it took about 25 minutes and we were the owners of a property that's actually construction began this week. So um, awesome. well, let, well, let's let's unpack this now. You went under contract, you closed in two weeks. Um, the documentation was like very, very minimal. Um, you took none of your own money to the closing table. So here's the question, Chris, you, you and Caroline closed on this deal. You took none of your own money to the closing table. Did you bring home a check? We sure did. We How sure big did. was we... the check that you brought home? $54,000. Okay, now let's stop and think about that. Your credit score had nothing to do with this deal. Um, your there was no application process. Um, you uh, you closed in two weeks. You took none of your own money to the closing table. You brought home a check for fifty four thousand dollars when you bought, and you and you hadn't done anything yet, <laughs> right? Except right. you got the private money lined up. You got and you found the deal, negotiated on the deal. How did it make you feel to bring home a fifty-four thousand dollar check to buy the house? I mean, it felt incredible. Easy process. 
uh, you know, brought home a check to the house and go ahead. Yeah, it, it was just a simple process. Uh, you know, we we bring home a, a check. You know, we're we're getting a check at closing rather than trying to you know brush the pennies together to give them everything they need on the twenty percent down. And um, you know, we were uh, right away on to signing with a, a contractor that we had a yeah. you know relationship with through our agent. Um, we were able to get referred in and, you know, it's all, it's all about relationships, Jay. It's oh, all man. about we're, relationships. We're talking relationship money. In fact, I just had a guest on a previous podcast of mine. He talked about um, relationship capital and reputational capital. I mean, you, I mean, you can't, I mean, you can't put a value on your reputation, doing what you right. say you're going to do, looking after yeah. your private lenders. So let's talk about the numbers on this deal, Chris. First of all, what is the after repaired value of this house? 209K, 209,000. Okay, so 209,000 is the after repaired value. And how much did you buy it for? What was your purchase price? $54,900. Woo! You bought it for $54,900. Bought the property for $54,900. So I'm just going to make round figures here for easy figuring. Your arms to your after repaired value is 210. You bought it for say fifty five, and then what is your um, your rehab budget? How much is it going to cost to renovate it? The rehab budget is fifty two thousand. So fifty two thousand dollars. All right. So you're all in for one hundred seven thousand. So let's see here. Your after repair value is two hundred ten thousand minus your. Um, Purchase price of fifty five thousand minus your renovation cost of fifty two thousand. I'm showing a profit of one hundred three thousand dollars less. Are you going to sell it through by a realtor? Or are you going to hang yes. on to it? No, I'm I'm going to sell it through my agent. Um, at least that's the plan. Um, I'm not uh, opposed to looking at a you know a lease to own or or something like that. But um, as of right now, the plan is to sell it through my agent. Got you. Well, let me tell you from experience, if you're going to put $52,000 of rehab in it, do not sell it on rent to own because you do not want to rehab it twice. <laughs> Good to know, Jay. I will... how I know that. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure you have experience with that. I, I did a lot of that. And even yeah. though 80% of them cashed out, I didn't like rehabbing the other 20%. So let me see here. For a gross profit, less realtor fees and carrying costs, at a gross profit of $103,000, did you have to take this deal to the committee to get it approved? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I, I had to take it to the, uh, yeah, no. Uh, but Caroline and I looked at that one and it made a lot of sense really quickly, especially uh, using, you know, all, all the uh, um, formulas and everything we've learned through the, the J. Connor Platinum Plus program and all the offerings that we have through through your services. So, yeah, no, it's been terrific, Jay. It's been terrific. That is awesome. I cannot tell yeah. you how excited I am for you. Now, here's the question. How long would it yeah. take to have $103,000 cash flow? Well, first of all, you got a, you budgeted, you brought home a $54,000 check from the closing, right? Right. And just so everybody understands, obviously, Chris and Caroline brought home that $54,000 check because they borrowed more than they needed to buy, and they also borrowed enough up front for the renovation project. Right. So they didn't have to like dig into their pocket. And and here's another thing about this world of private money, Chris. Are there any draws with your private lender, like construction draws, or you get it all up front? No, you get it all up front. Get it all up front. I mean, so you see, I mean, my friends in Kentucky would call this a 360. It's not a 360. If you do a 360, you came back to where you started. This is a 180. So... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, because one of my best friends in the world is from Kentucky. He says that all the time. But okay. Yeah. Talk about just a 180 degree shift on mindset. First of all, you know, you've heard me say, yeah. Chris, I mean, the old traditional way of, you know, borrowing money is, as you referred to, go to the bank, get on your hands and knees and put your hand underneath your chin and beg and say, please fund my dig and a deal. And of course, in this world, we are not begging, chasing. We're not asking for a mortgage. We're offering a mortgage and we're teaching people actually what private money is all about and, you know, how to do business with us. You know, Carol, Joy and I have got 47 private lenders right now 
and none of them had ever heard of private money or private lending or self-directed IRAs. That's a whole nother show right there, self-directed IRAs. But they never heard of that until they came into this world. And of course, at the Private Money Academy Conference event that you um, attended, you got to see about a dozen of our private lenders there as well. Before I forget, Chris, I want to go ahead and give all of our listeners a free gift. This is a recent money guide that I just wrote. You can download it for free if you're listening to this show or watching. And this will get you on the fast track to private money the way Chris and Caroline Cornett are doing private money, just like I do. You can download it at www.jconner.com. And I'm an E-R, not an O-R, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. That's J Connor, J A Y C O N N E R dot com forward slash money guide. It'll get you on the fast track to private money. So, Chris, um, my next question is: is I mean, just how did it feel when? You, how did how did you feel? How did you and Caroline feel when you were actually able to break through? Finally, realize that private money was the thing that you were missing in your business and. And, you know, I mean, I mean, what was that like? Uh, very freeing, Jay. Um, for us to uh, to realize that there is no limit. The sky's the limit for what we can do. Um, the ability to, to scale our business and to serve others is um, uh, not something that has a limit on it. Um, and I think that's what makes me the happiest with this program is that we're able to serve so many people along the way, from the private lender to the people that we're able to employ now. Um, to our, you know our families and our friends and um, our, our real estate agent and our attorney and all the different people who you know we can serve along the way is is um, really what makes me happy in this and and of course with every transaction like I like you mentioned in your introduction we we um, give a um, an amount to a veterans organization Whole Vet is one of our favorite veterans organizations that we um, I'm actually on the the board for uh, and we um, does a lot of good for transitioning warriors um, but we're big in supporting veterans and supporting our communities. And there's so many ways that we can do that through this program and, um, and what we've been able to, to see so far. So we're excited about what's to come. I am so excited for you as well. Um, so I've got a, you know, I have a percentage of followers that have never raised private money. In fact, they've never done their first real estate deal. Um, of course, you now know from experience that the fastest way to get your first or your next real estate deals by using private money. The fastest way to give like your checkbook an infusion of cash and money is by doing private money like you and Caroline are now doing. Um, and I have seasoned real estate investors as well. But if you were talking to a real estate investor that's in single family houses and they haven't done their first deal yet, or let's say you're talking with someone that, maybe does one to five deals a year. Uh, what advice would you give them on getting started out? Um, my, the advice I would give them, Jay, is find a coach. Um, find somebody who can help mentor you. And um, uh, there's lots of material out there. There's so much material, it's almost overwhelming. Um, but find a coach who can really help guide you because um, that, that is what made the difference for us. And that's what can make the difference for anybody. Um, so that, that, that would be my biggest advice. Find a coach who can help support you and, and get you on the fast track, right? Anybody can learn this stuff and, and, uh, and it's probably going to take you a while, but a coach can really help guide you and, and make it happen quickly. Well, you know, I wish I had followed your advice <laughs> and knew about your advice when I started because the first six years, 2003 to 2009, I wish that I was out here by myself trying to figure this out. And, and I'll give a little caveat to what you just said. Don't, you know, if, if you want to learn how to do this business and do private money, use private money, work with someone that not only knows how to do it and has done it, but is still in the arena today, who is still doing the business today. Get a mentor or coach to work with that's still doing the business today, um, such as myself. Because I tell you, I, I just could, number one, why would I not be in the business? For goodness sakes, right? Uh, but secondly, I just couldn't feel good about coaching or teaching somebody else about this world unless I was still in it. Like, for example, um, 
finding deals, how I find my deals. I mean, we've been finding deals by tracking foreclosures, you know, for many, many years. But like, you know, three years ago, I didn't even know anything about using Google Pay Per Click to get motivated sellers. Um, but Chris, there's there, there's one thing that a lot of new real estate investors experience and feel. Maybe you felt the same thing. And that is when they're starting out, they feel fearful and starting a conversation or starting to talk with someone about private money and being a private lender. Uh, what's your favorite way to start conversations and what's your favorite way to find private lenders? Start out by saying hello and uh, just catching up on, on the past and you know whatever relationship you might have with the person, whether they're family or friend or a, another uh, acquaintance, um, just have a casual conversation, reach out to them. And um, I, I'm more introverted by nature myself, so this is a harder thing for me to do. Uh, but I've found that, um, you know, people that they're happy to talk about what's going on and just reach out and say, you know, what, I might have something that that'll help you. And I'm, I'm here to educate. And even if it's something that you don't want to do, um, it's still good education. And if you want to do it with somebody else, that's fine. I'm just here to provide uh, education and, and learning um, for others and, and hoping that it'll be able to help them in some way. Absolutely. And of course, we want to make sure that everyone understands we're not talking about hard money. Right. In this conversation, as we said at the beginning of the show, we're talking about doing business with um, with individuals, you know, with with uh, with human beings. Well, right. we have a long list. We've mentioned a few of them. We have a long list of why we love private money. Now, the private money lenders love doing business with us because they get high rates of returns safely and securely. Uh, we're not borrowing unsecured money. They don't have to worry about uh, their value of their investment being volatile, like in contrast to the stock market. They know exactly what they're going to get in their rate of return. But of all the, out of all the reasons, Chris, that you love private money, can you, can you nail it down to two or three, your favorite reasons you love private money to fund your real estate deals? The ease of transaction, uh, the ease of transaction, um, being able to serve other people, like I mentioned already a few times, um, being able to offer a, a high rate of return to, to individuals uh, in a safe and secure manner with no volatility. Um, th those are those are the top two. And plus, it, it enables me and Caroline to be able to focus on other things, too, on, on scaling our business and not being caught up with administrative tasks and being able to help more people and reach more people. Um, so there, there's so many enablers that this system provides that. I love it. I love it. Chris, thank you so much for uh, inviting me to come on here. And I tell you, Chris, you are a man of integrity, a reputation, and uh, a good number of our audience also is interested in being private lenders, getting high rates of returns safely and securely. So what is your contact information for those that may want to reach out to you and Caroline and talk about investing with you? Absolutely. So our uh, Facebook, you can find us at CNC Property Solutions on uh, Facebook. Uh, our Instagram is at CC Prop Solutions. Um, you can find us on Instagram and we're also on LinkedIn and uh, CNC Property Solutions. And then please feel free to email us directly, chris.cornett at ccpropsolutions.com or caroline.cornett at ccpropsolutions.com. We'd be happy to have a conversation. Awesome. Well, we will make sure that all that contact information is in the show notes. Uh, so um, if you're listening, um, I highly recommend get in touch with Chris and Caroline to have a, a conversation. Um, and um, all that info, all the contact information will be right there in the show notes. Chris, thank you again so much for joining me here on the show. Thank you so much, Jay, for having me. Thank you for everything you do for so many people. It's really been a pleasure, and I, I really appreciate what you do personally, and I know many others do as well. Thank you. God bless you. Thank well, you. there you have it, another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, your host, also known as the Private Money Authority. And in order for us to continue to have amazing guests like Chris, I know you learned a lot of nuggets of him sharing his experience and getting started with private money, be sure if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify, be sure to follow. If you're watching us on uh, YouTube, uh, be sure and 
Click that bell so you don't miss out on any of the other upcoming amazing episodes of Raising Private Money. Be sure and share it. If you got some value from this episode, and I know you did, I need your help. Be sure and share this episode with those in your circle that would benefit as well. So I'm Jay Connor, wishing you the very best. Looking forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money. And this world of private money will take your business to the next level. See you right here on the next show. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.